William Hill sponsors IFL TV. I'm the man to beat Daniel Dubois. We're going to sleep. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Las Vegas, fight week, Fury Schwartz. Fighting this week also is Michaela Mayer. How are you, miss? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, yeah, talk to me about this Saturday, Elizabeth Crespo. Um, how much do you know about her? So, it, this was an interesting um, time to pick our, our to select an opponent because we tried to go after the world titles at 130. That's what we wanted. We feel like we're ready for that. It's my 11th pro fight. And um, we weren't able to strike a deal with any of the world champs at this time. So, we found another opponent. That opponent pulled out. So, Elizabeth stepped up about four weeks ago. Um, so, you know, thank you to Elizabeth for stepping up to take this fight. I know she's from Argentina. I know that she seems to be a pressure fighter. Her last fight was a world... She was a world title contender before, so um, she has some good pro experience, and we expect her to take it to us. Obviously, it's uh, a little bit of an understatement that women's boxing is thriving more so now than it ever has been over the last sort of two years. The exposure it's got has kind of opened up doors for yourself and all the other girls in the sport, but how much of an impact has the likes of Clarissa Shields and Katie Taylor uh, becoming like, like undisputed champions? How much has that kind of helped uh, pave the way for women's boxing in your opinion? It's, everything is kind of happening the way that I think girls like us envisioned it. Like, you know, Katie Taylor's been boxing since she was how old, so young. You know, Clarissa goes and wins two, two gold medals. Um, me being the first female signed with top rank, like, we have been seeing this vision for women's boxing for so many years, and I feel like it's finally unfolding. Um, and there's a handful of girls who have that stage and have that platform right now who are helping to actually define a path for these young girls coming up to follow because I know when we were all coming up there really wasn't a path to follow there, there wasn't a market for women's boxing um, and now there is which is really exciting and you see so many young girls coming out and just really excited about being in the gym and boxing and I love seeing that. Do you feel like as well as it's done over the last couple of years and it's become brought to more people's attention you're still having to convince people that don't look at it like it's women's boxing, just look at it like it's boxing and kind of, you're still having to convince people that that's the case. I don't try and convince anybody outside of my performances, right? So we can sit here and we can be and, and complain or talk, but we don't have control over what these people are saying and doing. All we have control of is what we do when we step in that ring. At the end of the day, when we go in there and we show that we can fight, we can put on a show, and that we have the skill and the talent to be on these big stage, People have no choice but to, to to see the truth and change their mind. So I'm just gonna keep getting in there and, and showing them, you know, what I can do. Did you watch the fight between Taylor and Pearson? Yes, I did. Obviously, a lot of people had their opinions about this fight. Yeah. And a lot of people felt it was the decision was harsh on Delphine. What, what was your thoughts on it? First of all, it was a win-win for women's boxing. I mean, yeah. they both came out and they fought their hardest. It was amazing to watch. They put women's boxing on the map for sure. You can't say anything bad about either one of them in that fight. Um, I want to watch it over again because when I first watched it, I did think that Delphine Pursun kind of edged Katie out in the end. Um, and I, I thought they were going to give Pursun the decision, but I also would have been happy with the draw because I do feel like it was close. Um, so we'll see. I, I got to watch it over again, but I, I really can't wait for the rematch. I think that's going to tell us a lot. I think. Katie will probably feel like she has to rematch her yeah, to really kind does. of uh, appreciate herself being undisputed champion. Uh, that's the kind of I was there at Madison Square Garden. And that's the kind of feeling I thought she would have been disappointed that yeah, there's people questioned it. People yeah. are questioning it. She may have questioned it herself. I don't know, but yeah. listen, it's not her fault. She's got all the belts, but I think to kind of really savor the moment of being undisputed champ, I think she'd want to. Rematch yeah, she's Delphine. a real champion. I'm sure she she wants it to there to be no question, and she'll be happy to give her a rematch. What's the plan for you over the next 12 months? How do you kind of see the next 12 months for you? Um, like I said, we're ready to start taking those world title fights at 130. Um, I'm a strong 130 pounder. I can still make 130, so I want to clean out this division while I can. I want those world titles this year, and then obviously I got the height. I feel like I have the strength and the speed. I'm gonna move up 
probably multiple divisions over the next five years of my career. Um, so 130 this year, 135 next year. I plan on going up there and fighting the top girls. And uh, maybe even 140 one day. You never know. You never know. <laughs> but first things first, um, Elizabeth Crespo stands in your way this week. Yes. Oh, it's on the undercard of, of Tyson Fury. How much have you seen of Tyson Fury over here? Obviously, he's a, a huge star back home. He's trying to make his name, obviously, on the US scene. But what are your thoughts on Tyson Fury? I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, I've always been a Tyson Fury fan. I, well, not always. I think recently because we have been hearing a lot about a lot, a lot about him in the United States. Um, I think he's a great boxer. Like he's a classic boxer, which I really enjoy watching his style. And I think he's a great person. I follow him on social media. He has a lot of positive, good things to say. So I'm really honored to be on his card, and I think he's making a good name for himself in America. I and mean, he really is. I love that top rank signed him. I think it's awesome. Absolutely. He's uh, a lot of people have kind of got this opinion of Tyson Fury. Very unpredictable. Never really knows what he's going to do. And that goes for outside and inside the ring. So uh, he's got a personality. You know, yeah. boxing needs people with personalities. You know, you got. They need people like Tyson. I think they yeah, do. I yeah. think they do. So he 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 brings maybe a non-boxing fan, you know, attention towards boxing. Yeah. It should be an eventful night on yes. Saturday here at Madison Square Garden. Oh, I said Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Las Vegas. I was there last week. <laughs> the Golovkin. That's why. Right. Uh, MGM Grand. Apologies. Um, Michaela, thank you very much for your time, thank and look uh, forward to seeing you out in the ring on Saturday. Yes, Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. William Hill sponsors IFL TV. I'm the man to beat Daniel Dubois. We're going to sleep.